each side of the smaller square in the figure below is x inches long. And each side of the larger square in the figure below is c inches longer than the side of a smaller square. The area of the larger square is how many square inches greater than the area of the smaller square. So to solve this problem, we're going to need to find the area of this larger square, which is, as we said, uh, the sides of this square are equal to x plus c inches long on each side, x plus c over here, and also uh, x plus c over here. And from this, we're going to subtract the area of the smaller square. If we can find that, that's this little guy here whose sides are of size x and size x. So there's two important concepts you're going to need to understand to solve this particular problem. One is just the area of a square, which is pretty simple. If we know how long the sides of the square are, we just multiply them together to get the area. So imagine we had a square that sides were too long. So here I'll represent that by breaking it into one, two portions here and one, two portions here. Its area is going to be two times two or four square inches and we can actually see this here one two three four units and that's true of any square you just multiply together the sides now there's a second important fact that we're going to need to understand how to solve this problem and i will show you i'll show you why why we need to do this in just a sec so here here if we're going to find the area of this square it's equal to x plus c times x plus c let me write in the C's here in the appropriate color. And then we're going to subtract X times X. So most of this you should be able to do here if you know a little uh, basic algebra. But one confusing point might be this uh, when I'm multiplying together two elements that are in parentheses. And so let me show you how you do that. Let's, let's just again break it down as if, say I was telling you to multiply together one plus two times three plus four. Now you could add these numbers together and then multiply them, but let's show how you can multiply first and then add. So the way we would do this is we have to multiply together every set of terms. So one times three, one times three, plus one times four, one times four, plus 2 times 3, 2 times 3, plus 2 times 4, 2 times 4. And if we add these together, we have 3 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8. Let's see, that's going to be 10 uh, plus 11. That's going to be 21. And now we can confirm that's the right answer if we just go back to the original. 1 plus 2 is 3, and 3 plus 4 is 7. So yeah, we're getting the exact same result. And what's nice about going the first way we went is we didn't actually have to know how to add up these numbers on their own. Well, that's the same situation we're in over here in our problem. And this is probably the only part that makes it a hard algebraic problem. But here we can do the exact same thing. So let's multiply together x times x, x times x, plus x times c, x times c, I'll switch colors here to represent c, and then plus, now we need to multiply the c term times each of these, so c times x, and then finally we need to multiply together c times c, so plus c times c. Now finally we're going to uh, pull down this last term, minus x times x. And at this point we have a, a pretty, you know, well it's a long equation but it's simple to solve. So here we have an x times x and we subtract x times x so we can cancel those two. And then we can multiply, uh, let's see, we have x times c and c times x. So we can just call that 2x times c. And then we have 
uh, c squared, which we can't simplify, is just c squared. And this is our final equation, which is exactly the right answer, k.